Roger, we're going at alarm. They were coming in backwards. All I had a view of initially was the sky. Only at the last minute did they pitch over, and they had markings there where it, it would show you, given your current trajectory, where you're going to land. Sure enough, when Armstrong looked out, he said, hey, there's big boulders out there. Well, he was headed for a boulder field. Pretty much the, the worst possible landing site that might hit the lunar module as it landed and tip it over. He realized that was not a good place to land, so he took over manual control. He's under full manual control now, and he can't go back. 2,900. This is his own personality and his decades of training leading up to this point. Down at 30, down at 15. He's listening to the readout coming from Buzz about their descent rate, this incredible amount of pressure. Aldrin was calling out uh, propellant remaining and, and altitude. They're holding their breath as they watch the propellant quantity decrease and decrease. They had medical monitoring on the crew and they could choose one to watch. So of course they always watched the commander. Armstrong had the highest heart rate of any of the commanders during landing. And a half down. 70. In mission control, all you can do is watch and hold your breath. It got pretty tense, so it was very important to find a suitable landing spot. There's a tiny margin for error. The Apollo 11 mission is pushing everything to the limit of what's possible with current technology. There's a separate fuel tank for the engine that will lift them back off the moon but there's almost no spare fuel for the landing thrusters. And if they run out before they get on the ground, the module will crash. And everyone in mission control knows it. By choosing to fly over the rocky area, they added something like an extra minute to the flight. 60 seconds. They are watching the fuel level. We've got to get this thing down or we've got to abort right now. The tension was building and he finally sets on the, the spot, he says, that's it. This is what makes an astronaut an astronaut. This is what sets astronauts apart from us mere mortals. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. It seemed almost surreal, up until Aldrin says we're kicking up some dust, and that drove it home. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right level. Ready? down and a half. As you get closer to the surface, it gets more and more hazardous. 30 seconds. At the bottom of the lunar module were three probes. And when they touch, that activates a blue contact light on the lunar module's control panel. Contact light. Once the contact probes touch, it's safe to just plop onto the surface from that height. You couldn't help but be awed by what was about to happen. Engine arm off. We copy you down, Eagle. Then Neil came on and said, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. They made it. When their voices came back, it was just this collective sigh of relief that they had that they had survived. And at that point, the room just erupted. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. In the room behind us, the viewing room, it just, you could hear this roar. Gene Francis, settle down, settle down. OK, keep the chatter down in this room. Hey, guys, it's not over yet. <laughs> we got a lot that we have to do. So calm down and, and get focused. They had like one brief moment of cheering, then all right, get back to work. <laughs>